Yeah, you've, you, you've mentioned this before, and I've experienced it myself in, in well, obviously I, I was um, privy to a lot of emails, but his style is very much, you think this, you think that, I, you know, blah, 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 but in fact, um, his presumptions are as erroneous as his presumption that the Bible is a, the most scientific book in history. Oh, he, oh he get, God gets right pissed. I mean, let's face it, he committed global genocide at one point because he was getting so pissed off. Um, then, I mean, it... it... <laughs> but I, I just think that, you know, people are prepared to worship this God. I mentioned this on a blog, I think, recently. Um, this is the all-powerful God. Um, who made a perfect creation and after the sixth day in fact after every day he stood back and said all was good um, but particularly after he'd finished everything all was good um, and within I mean it's a bit unclear as to how quickly but it seems very quickly um, Adam and Eve had fucked up by eating the fruit of knowledge which he would put there he would put the tree of knowledge there he put the fruit on the tree and he'd given curiosity and created the serpent he, it had an internal, serious internal flaw in its design. Then he fucks up again, so he drowns everyone. Then it for, fucks up again, so he sends his son down, obviously because he's given up appearing as a burning bush, can't face the flack himself, so he sends his son down. Still doesn't get any better. He's had three chances at this now. And you've gone very quiet. We've lost sound. Oh, no, okay. End of round. But the, the people ne kneel and pray to this wonderful being. He's fucked it up three times and now he's waiting for, you know, everything to go pear-shaped and a nuclear war to save the faithful or something. I, I'd never understand the revelations, but there we go. Um, this car will be driverless. And I think that's as close as they hmm. ever come to, to a sense of humour. Yeah. I, I, that's sort of funny in, in a kind of yeah. weird way. Uh, and I, I, I like the atheist comeback, which is, if rapture is a world without fundamentalist nutters. <laughs> They'll all be gone. Hooray! <laughs> hey, we both win. Uh, you yeah, see? it's win-win. I mean, I'm all, I'm all for the rapture. Yeah. yeah. They go into heaven. Finally, finally, we can actually have a world, uh, yeah, without religious nutters. And it will be our paradise. Thank you very much for leaving. Don't let the door hit you on the way out. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. But I think Frank's comment here was, yeah, why, why would an omnipotent God take seven days to create, or six days to create a universe? And then have to rest. And then why would they have to rest? I mean, is creation so tiny? If you're an infinitely powerful being, it should be creation in an instant and no need to rest. I think that when creation is talking about infinity, they mean really, 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 really big, or really, 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 really powerful. Yeah. But not necessarily the term infinite really doesn't fit into yeah. the mind scale. So, so we, yes, we are talking like uh, four-year-old concepts of infinity. Is it because the punishment and reward system in the Bible is actually one that a two-year-old can understand. If anybody's ever done, mm. if anybody's ever babysat like a younger cousin or something, you know. Mm. But this kind of mentality, this is what. A two-year-old. This is a, how, the way a two-year-old thinks. Well, not necessarily no, with the I, I, genocide, I disagree yeah. with that. In that, most of the stuff in the Bible is it's got primitive culture written all over it. Yeah. I think the interpretation that most of your Christians would have, it, you know, this very simple, simplistic morality. There, you're right. You're there, you're spot on. Because kids, but, even two-year-olds, they understand right and wrong and fair. And, and then when something bad happens, they want to. They're angry and they're mad and they want yeah. to, you know, stomp on that. They want vengeance. Yeah, because they were done wrong by and, and they want they want this, they want that. And when they're denied that, that it's not. But good. even they even, even at it. even at that, they can actually acknowledge that there is uh, virtue in letting it go. Yes. In forgiveness. It's a little harder to understand, but they do understand that. Yeah. Or the term of waiting and, okay, then you get bigger prize afterwards. Okay, like that's the deal. They can strike deals like that. If you yeah. wait a bit longer, you can get a better treat later on. Yeah. So, yeah, four-year-old versus religion. There you go. 
Actually, I was thinking of two-year-old. I remember two-year-old okay. you could talk to like that. And it's, yeah. Yep, terrible twos. Yep. So actually, God act like a kid. Terrible. Uh, Thunder. Twos. Yeah. Thunder. During the course of um, your your discussion with Ray, you were asked about the uh, origins of the universe, and you you um, said it was an unknown. Um, Obviously, there are a number of theories that are currently, um, you know, popular. Uh, is there any any one in particular that you find more satisfactory than other ones? I mean, there are things there, there are things that we know about the past, but and if Andromeda's wake, he would tell you this uh, in probably better terms than I. But when you get back to uh, the sort of Planck epoch and the such like. You're at things which have very high gravitational field, things that are very small, things that are happening very quick. So you're into relativity and quantum mechanics. And once you get down to this sort of um, level of understanding, in intuition does not serve you in either quantum mechanics or relativity, general relativity especially. And in that sense, I think the sort of facile understandings of beginning and such like, they almost cease to have meaning. These aren't really... What we know about the very early universe is that it is not something that can be interpreted intuitively. And so this is what... doesn't work in... in our mind yeah. works on a very medium scale kind of universe. Yeah. Uh, our mind doesn't work. Our mind is not built to comprehend the structure and the uh, mannerisms of matter uh, on a cosmic scale. A cosmic or a microscopic scale. Or, yeah. And if you like, in the in, in the very early universe, you had both of those. You had all the mass in a very small area, and the things happening fairly quickly. So. Yeah, it's you get people like, especially Venom Fang X, with this very facile understanding of there is a universe, therefore it must have had a beginning. Well, it's like a puddle. In fact, Douglas Adams put this beautifully. Way it's like a, a puddle of water looking around, saying, "This groove in the me. world yeah. fits me perfectly. Yeah. It must have been designed just for me." Whereas in fact the exact reverse isn't true. It's actually true. Whereas it was, yeah. it, it is now the shape it is because that's what the grooves in the in the concrete or whatever yeah. were. And then there's the bit about evaporating slowly and mm. wondering what world's getting smaller and smaller. Yes. Uh, uh, just just dealing with the um, the concept of things that are incomprehensible. Um, I I watched um, the other evening. Um, one of the uh, great uh, Richard Feynman lectures, um, which are uh, now available for general viewing because um, Bill Gates, God bless him, has purchased the copyright from the BBC and they are at a link which um, the person I call Sicker Stickers has just put up. If you want to put that up a couple of times, Sicker Stickers, if you don't know Richard Feynman, you need to. If you haven't watched his lectures, you really ought to. Uh, he is my personal sort of god uh, in science and whatever. So uh, post it every so often, sicker stickers. Uh, let people um, make a copy of it. Didn't his wife set up that charity? Yeah, she may well have done. But it, Bill, Bill Gates and, and Microsoft's an interesting one in that you, know, you, you can make a fairly reasonable argument that uh, the existence of someone like Bill Gates who has tens of billions of dollars to his name is an utter bastardization of the capitalistic system in which we live in that there is absolutely no way that someone could possibly justifiably contribute that much to civilization. However, having said that, it is also only conceivable by having someone with this sort of sum of wealth that you can get people like this setting up trust like the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation which if I understand it rightly is the largest charitable trust in the world and the most open no as far as I can tell it's legitimate, it, it's legitimate but because he's got so much money he can actually 
essentially